Oh, the Lord be with you. Uh, welcome back as we're looking at how to pray the Ten Commandments, making our way through God's revealed will for our lives, and, and learning what it means to be a humans, creatures created in the image of God, who live uh, godly and God-pleasing lives um, as, as we're new creations in Jesus. And, and we're looking at God's revealed will, and we're also learning how to pray, uh, continuing to learn to pray. The disciples of Jesus um, had been had been faithful people of God their whole lives. They've been walking with Jesus, learning from Jesus, himself in the flesh, and still they were able to pause and say, Lord, teach us how to pray. And, and so we are continuing to grow in our lives of prayer. Uh, today we're looking at the seventh commandment, uh, you shall not steal. Uh, we'll look at a brief explanation of that, a couple Bible verses about possessions and goods here on earth, and then we're going to run those through our our pattern of uh, looking at instruction, what is God's word teaching us, thanksgiving, um, where can we be thankful here, uh, confession, where does God's word challenge us or reveal a weakness in us and invite us to confess, and then gathering all that together um, as we pray. And so the seventh commandment, you shall not steal. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, we should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. So the seventh commandment is about stealing. It's about stuff. And, and like every commandment, it's got the, the, the prohibition, the negative side, as well as the positive side. So we are to not steal our neighbor's things or get them in a dishonest way or, or a way that appears right but is still manipulative. Um, but rather than stealing, we should help our neighbor, help uh, keep an eye on things, help him or her protect their possessions. And, and the great thing about the Ten Commandments is that God's will is that this would go round and round for all of us. So God's will is that we would not steal our neighbor's stuff. And God's will is that nobody would take my stuff and nobody would steal your stuff. And, and God's will is that you help your neighbor take a good care of their things. And God's will is that your neighbors would help you take good care of your things. Uh, just to pause here and say, how, how great is this? This is a good plan. Uh, sometimes we, we get down on God's word or commandments as if he's just this mean um, tyrant in the sky or this buzzkill. But, but imagine for a second, what if we lived in a world where nobody stole from each other? What if we lived in a world where everybody helped take care of each other? Oh, that's a pretty good world. That's a pretty good plan. And, and, and that's God's will for us. So we'll look at a couple of verses, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. Uh, first from Psalm 37, verse 21. The wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. Psalm 37, verse 21. The wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward instruction here. Um, those who are, who are righteous are people who, who generous and give. And it's not saying that if you're generous and if you give, then you become righteous before God. But it's describing those who are in a right relationship with God. What do they do? Well, they're the kind of people who are generous and give. And, and, and the people who are outside of God's will, the wicked people, what do they do? Well, they borrow and, and, and they don't pay back. And so they're, they're, they're borrowing things and they're not giving it back. And, and God's word is teaching us here. The instruction is that there are, there are two different paths we might be on. Um, those who would be generous and give um, out of their abundance and those who would take and, and uh, not give back. So thanksgiving. Um, man, to, to be thankful, uh, well, one thing this makes me thankful for looking beyond my own life is just the people around me. I mean, I'm thankful that, that I have friends and colleagues and, and, and family, extended family that, that would be generous, who are generous. Um, I have people in my life that I can ask for help from and they're going to they're gonna be there. They're going to show up and they're going to loan to me or just give to me. And, and that's, that's something that maybe I don't really think about a whole lot. I've kind of taken for granted that if I need something, I've got people I could call in a, in a bind. Um, and that's a, that's a pretty sweet thing that, that I, I, I walk among the righteous. 
of God's holy and loving people who, who are generous. And that's a pretty cool thing to be thankful for. Uh, confession. Um, I, I suppose there, there are a number of occasions where I have not been generous. Um, there, there are other occasions where, where I've, I've been kind of following the path of the wicked that borrows and doesn't take or doesn't pay back. Um, and and, and I, I suppose I could put a good construction on that. Maybe I borrowed a book or a movie and, and, I, and I simply forgot to give it back. It, you know, it wasn't a, a malicious, intentional theft on my part. It just sort of, you know, it, it got mixed with my things and now it's there. And, and maybe I've even moved away or maybe it's just years later and it's hard to, you know, what am I going to take it back now? Um, and I don't know actually what I should do if I find some of those things. But, but I suppose there are times where I've taken something and hope and hoped nobody's find out. And there, there are other times where it just sort of happened on accident. And yet um, accidental failings are still failings. And so I, I can confess that maybe I wasn't more intentional with, with what somebody had loaned to me or, or let me use. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Um, this is at the end of Ephesians, or near the end, where, where Paul has talked about grace, he's talked about faith, he's talked about our identity and who we are in Jesus, and how we've been made um, according to God's plan for good works that God has prepared for us. And then he spells out how that actually gets lived out in our earthly lives. So Ephesians 4, 28. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Yeah. Ephesians 4.28 Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So the instruction here. Well, again, this is in Ephesians, where a brief letter, Paul talks about how we're, we're, we're forgiven. We are free by grace through faith. And yet God's word teaches that just because we are forgiven in Jesus doesn't mean we get to do whatever we want. Um, rather, because we've been forgiven and made new, we get to live out God's will. And, and part of that will is that we wouldn't steal from each other, um, but rather that we would labor and work and, and, and notice the, the purpose here. It's not just so that um, you would have enough, but, but do honest work so that you may have something to share with anyone in need. You see, the moment we're in Christ, we, we, we start to see beyond ourselves, um, that, that we're, we're broken out of this selfish pattern and mold that we were born into, and, and all of a sudden we get to labor for others, we get to put others first. In humility, consider others more significant than yourselves. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, this is who we are as Christians. So not only does God say don't steal, um, he says work so, so that you'll have enough and so that you can share with others. And all of this is under the heading of you've been saved by grace through faith and you are free apart from your works. You're standing with God apart from works. So get to work to bless your neighbor. Uh, so, so Thanksgiving, um, you know, labor and work can be a burden under, under the curse of sin that we live in in this fallen world, and yet sometimes we get glimpses of the joy of labor, a, a good hard day's work, whether it's manual labor or just intense mental effort. Um, there is something to say that, 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 that labor and working is a gift from God. Adam and Eve were put in the garden to work even before they fell in sin. That earthly labor was a gift from God. And so, so th this invites me to be thankful just for the, the gift of, of occupation and employment that I have, that I get to work, um, both for, for pay, but also you know, as I labor in the yard or I serve my family, that I get to work, that I'm able to work. Um, that, that's a sweet gift. And, and thankful that, that in, in the, the stewardship of who God has created me to be, I get to bless others. I, I can bless other people um, with, with my labors. That's, that's a really neat gift from God to be able to serve someone else. Uh, confession. Um, an immediate confession for me in this is I, I don't often labor for others. I, I labor so that I have enough, 
I labor up to the point where, where I can say I put in an honest day or I can, I can tell others, look, I'm tired because I worked hard and so now I've earned a break or I'm going to put my feet up or I'm going to turn on Netflix for four hours and I've labored so that I can be refreshed. And, and God certainly cares about rest and refreshment, but, but here it's a little bit convicting that, that one of the reasons we labor is to, to bless others. Um, so instruction, thanksgiving, confession, prayer. Uh, the seventh commandment is about things and possessions, what we have. And God's will is that we would um, not take from others, but we would actually help others. God's will is that your neighbor would not steal from you. And God's will is also that your neighbor would support you in what you have. And we get to be in this together, um, receiving of God's bounty and sharing generously with one another. So with all that in mind, let's, let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, you are a, a generous God. You, you cause the rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. You send rays of sunshine down on, on, the, on the righteous and on the wicked. And you give, you give to all your creatures. And you, you teach us, Lord, of what it means to be stewards within creation, to be people who, who are generous, to be people who do not steal or, or borrow without giving back. Uh, you teach us, Lord, that we are to labor, um, not expecting handouts, not expecting someone else to always provide for us, but, but you call us to work as we are able and out of the abundance that we are uh, recipients of to, to give generously. And so we, we thank you, Lord, for um, the things of this earth. Thank you for the material comforts that we have. Thank you for our homes, for our closets full of clothing, our garage full of, of toys and tools, um, for all the good things that we have, Lord. I thank you for the abilities that, that you've given to us by which we can labor and, and enjoy life. And we confess, Lord, the, the ways that, that we have, that we've taken, that we've borrowed thoughtlessly, Lord, we confess the ways that, that we have labored for ourselves, for our pride, um, for the uh, simple accumulation of more, and, and for the ways that, Lord, we're sorry for the ways that we haven't seen how we might help our neighbor, or we, we've turned a blind eye, or, or we, we've, we've blamed them in some way, or, or we, we see a, a fault in someone else, and and act as if that somehow relieves us of responsibility to help. Uh, so, Lord, we, we pray that you would give us generous hearts, um, generous towards others, generous towards you. Uh, we pray, Lord, that we would have, have perceptive minds and hearts and eyes, that we would see with clarity and in new ways the absolute abundance of what we've received from you. And so, God, help, help us to... Help us to delight in the things of this earth, to take good care of them, and to take good care of our neighbor. We ask it all in the name and for the sake of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Hey, well, thanks, thanks for joining today, and I, I pray that God's word refreshes you. And uh, just an encouragement, if you want to, uh, whether it's a small catechism or your Bible, um, however you can find um, either Bible verses about any topic, or just sort of working your way through sections of scripture. I, I hope this pattern is helpful of instruction, thanksgiving, confession, and prayer. And uh, I pray that as we're now kind of getting near the end of the Ten Commandments, you're able to see that this is something that you can do on your own. And uh, I, I hope that, that that Spirit leads you to, to continue to pray um, thoughtfully and intentionally, as well as kind of fluidly and extemporaneously. So uh, God keep you and bless you to this day and, and as you continue to journey with him in faith. Take care.